Hello and welcome back to the one, the only Welsh Watch podcast. And today is the final one before Wales take to the Euro 2020 competition as we start on Saturday against Switzerland. Bearing in mind, we're going to be looking at all 11 players that we would play for Saturday's game and start. I speak to a Switzerland fan, as we don't know much about the Swiss team, and we also make our predictions for Saturday's game. I'm your host, Ben Thomas. As always, I'm joined with Ben. Hello. Oh, look at that wave. What a handsome man. And I'm joined by the flexer himself, Lee. Hello. Oh, leaning with the AirPods, leaning with the AirPods. Let's get straight on to the episode. You can keep that in if you want, I don't mind. Right. <laughs> Right, so ahead of Saturday, we've all made our individual teams to who we want to start. First of all, let's go straight to Ben Evans. Talk me through your starting eleven for the Switzerland game on Saturday. Okay, so based on what I've seen, not just from my team, I've seen a lot on Twitter as well, it seems like everyone's front three is the same. It seems like a lot of people are the same midfield as well. So it's mainly the the defence and the goalkeeper that we seem to have differences in. So I'm going for me. I'm going Hennessy in goal, and the reason I'm not I'm not putting Danny Ward in is because, in my head, I don't understand. Like Hennessy's our number one keeper. That's what everyone sees him as. Like he's he's been that for a long time. I don't think he's done anything to to warrant him being dropped. If anything, he's 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 not done anything wrong. And in fact, he's had some really look. That, that, if you remember that Hungary game that got us into the Euros, he was ridiculously good that game. And I'm always thinking of stuff like that. So I keep Hennessy in for that one, despite Ward's great performances. And say Ward does come in, I won't be disappointed either. But I'd go Hennessy in goal. And then, obviously, you know, obviously there's Nico, there's Connor Roberts, but I'm starting Nico at right back. I think just in a Wales shirt, he just seems to perform at his best. So I'm going Nico at right back. And obviously Ben Davis played centre-back against Albania the other day, but I'm playing him at left back. And then my two centre-backs, I'm going Joe Rodon and... I could be swayed a different way, but I'm putting Mefham in centre back as well. So that's my my defence. But I think the midfield and the attack is very similar. So it's Allen, Ampadu, Ramsey in that kind of cam position, the number ten, I suppose, maybe a bit forward. Dan James and Gareth Bale on the wings, and then Keith Moore up front. Don't I yeah. don't really need to say much more about the the, the attack. No, I think our midfield and attack are basically very similar. I know I've made one change, but I want to ask you about your centre back though, Chris mm-hmm. Metham. What's made you go with Metham over Cabango, maybe even Ben Davis in the middle? Did you look at the game the other day against Albania and think, you know what, he deserves that? Or that's that's come into account. I think the said I thought our def- defensively we weren't great against Albania, not at all. And I think it was me, you know, Rodon's the one who keeps he's kind of our anchor. He's really good at controlling the defence and making sure everyone's playing at their best. So I think with Rode on that, it's a bit different. But I think I don't think Metham's had the best games of his life in the past few weeks. But I think he's preferred at Wales. Him and Rode on were always seen as the you know the defensive partnership we were going to see at the Euros anyway. So for me, I still keep him in there. I think, I think he's got that experience over a lot of the other boys who could have come in, like Kabanga, who's had a really good season with Swansea. And I'm sure one of you would have concluded him, but I think Mepham, just with the experience and his, it, I think, you know, the coaching staff clearly like him. So, yeah, I, keep, I agree with them. I keep Mepham in there. It's a very lovely team. I like, I like it. And to be honest, I wouldn't be mad if that starts. I like Ben Davis, the left back as well. So, but it's a beautiful team, Ben. I love it. If only you were the manager. Right. Oh, yeah. I'll go on to my team now. So, I'll start with Danny Ward in goal. And I'll say that just because the last few games he's had, he saved a Benzema a penalty. He's made some absolute banging saves. And you do speak about Hennessy, where he made that double save against Hungary in the one where we qualified for the Euros. But I just don't see how he can drop Danny Ward on the pass form that he's had over the last few games. But if Hennessy starts, I don't mind, because everyone loves Hennessy. I've gone with Connor Roberts, a right back. Roden and Cabango as the centre-back pair in. And Nico Williams on the left, the left back, over Ben Davis, because I don't know if he's fully fit. And then this is where we go different. I've gone Morel in centre mid with Allen and Ramsey in a forward forward role at Cam. Um, I've gone Dan James on the left, Keith Moore up top, Gareth Bale on the right. And I've only gone with Morel 
because of how well he's played the last few games. Obviously, some of the last few games he's played, he has put in the best performance of his life in that Wales shirt. And I would say Ampadu, but he had a very dodgy game on Saturday. But he did play at right back, which obviously is in his position. Yeah, I've, think... got, I've, I've got no problem with Morel coming in. The last few games, I think he's been one of our best midfielders. And we haven't had... a. It's been a while since we've seen Ramsey, Ampadu and Alan all in the midfield together. So Morel's kind of been there for a while now. So I can't, I've got no problems with that, I don't think. And the thing is, I also look at it and I think there's a reason Rob Page is playing Morel a lot more in that middle than Ampadu, maybe. Because so you saw Ampadu at right back on Saturday against Albania. Was it Saturday? I think it was. Pretty sure it was. I just think he's setting up already for Morel to play alongside Alan and Ramsey. But that is my team. And the only thing I'm saying is as long as we don't play this stupid false nine, I'm fine. You can play whatever you want. As long as Kiefer Moore, Gareth Bale, Ramsey are playing without a false nine, I'm fine. Because you look at that Albania game, that first half, we were just lofting balls into that strike position. And a normal natural striker would get the ball down, get it to his feet, spray it to the wings where we're strong. You saw against Albania, we're playing this false nine. Everyone kept on putting the ball in and no one was there. It kept on going to the centre-back, goalkeeper. And Albania dealt with it so easily. Second half, 45th minute, Kiefer Moore comes on. First thing he does, he's in that role as a striker. He gets the ball down, he gets it to the wing, creates a chance. And that is what a natural-born striker will do. And you saw on Saturday, he changed the game against Albania and just... Rob Page, I know you're not listening, but just play he might Kiefer be. Moore. He might. Maybe maybe Rob Page is a big fan of the Welsh watch. But just play Kiefer Moore without that false nine, because the false nine with our players, with our system, doesn't work. Anyway, that is my team. That is my team. Just do not play false nine. Lee, talk me through your team. Well, before I, before I reveal my team, I'm going to say Ben Evans' team is my favourite team, and that is the team I would usually go with but for Switzerland I'm going to change it up so in goal Wayne Hennessy standard I think uh, right back Connor Roberts great season with Swansea um, I'm going to go with Cabango and Rodon at the back I just think they've them two have played better over the past couple of games and I, I could argue Metham should be there but I'm just going to go with Cabango. Left back's interesting. I've gone with Nico Williams. I, as I said, I would normally select Ben Davis at left back, but like you said, Ben, I'm not 100% sure on his fitness. And I know Nico's played the last two games and I know he's played at left back. So I, I'd play him against Switzerland. My midfield three, Ampadu as the holding player. I know he's played for Sheffield United and they've had a terrible season, but I still think he's the best player in that position. And then with this against Switzerland, I think this is the key game to attack. If we want to win this game, we have to attack. So I'm going to go with Ramsey and Wilson just in front of Ampadu. I think Wilson's got creativity there. Ramsey, we all know what Ramsey's got. And then your standard front three, James, Moore and Bale. So straight away, Wilson over Joe Allen. So you're going to go more attacking than more defensive. Why would you go with Harry Wilson? Is it just for the creativity or? Yes. When you look at the group, we've got Italy and Turkey. I think in our predictions, well, I know Ben um, rated Turkey really well. And I think this is the game where we have to attack. And if we're going to get three points, this is the game to do it. I love Allen and any other game he'd start. But I think... Right now, Wilson's probably best. He's had a good season with Cardiff. He's played near up top as well, so he could link up really well with Keeper Moore. So I think that's how we should go into that game. Let's go in positive as well. Why not? It's very interesting. I'm not going to lie to you, but those are our 11s who we would play on Saturday. What we're going to do is we're going to put them on Twitter in a moment and we're going to see who the fans prefer. Will they like mine? Will they like Ben's with Hennessy, with Metham, or will they like Lee's with Harry Wilson? We will see. 
But that is all for our 11s. And what we'll do before every single game is we'll change them. We'll make changes if something doesn't work the game for, and we'll just see how they go throughout the tournament. And then we'll see who we want to play for the final and who will be lifting the trophy at the end. I Personally, I think it'll be Bale or someone like that, but we'll see. Anyway, next we're going to go on to an interview that I conducted with a, fa- a Swiss football fan called Craig King. Personally, boys, do you know much about Swiss football? Can't say I yeah, don't know. Scary. Exactly. So let's bring in a professional to talk about the Swiss team. This is Craig King. Enjoy what he has to say. Hello and welcome to this section of the podcast. Today, we believe that it would be good to get the opinion of a Switzerland fan in the run-up to Saturday's game. We're joined by Craig, who is Scottish, but also follows Swiss football. Craig, first of all, how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Thanks for having me on. So, first of all, let's just get the... Let's just get it out of the way. What is your... How do you come to loving Swiss football when you're Scottish? That's a, it's a question I get asked a lot, and it's quite a long story, so I'll keep it as brief as possible. But it was in 2011, I was watching the Champions League and FC Basel were playing. I remember the team from years prior, they had some really good players and I always liked the kits. So I decided on that night, I'll just try and uh, follow them whenever I can. They weren't on UK TV very much. The next time they were was against Manchester United and they drew at Old Trafford. And then from there, I started to find their games online and it branched out into the whole week. I was watching pretty much at least one game every weekend. And then I noticed there wasn't a Twitter account in English for Swiss football, like there is for Italian or Spanish. And I decided to create one and see how far it would go. And it's it's went further than, than I would have imagined. I've actually grown to have a passion for Swiss football and I've met many great people through the account. So it's been nothing but a good thing. I absolutely love that. That is amazing. And at least you've got two possible winners for this year's tournament in Scotland and Switzerland. So technically you're winning. But, yeah, exactly. Um, so first question, from a Swiss point of view, who are the best few players in your team that the Welsh fans might not know about? Well, the, the thing with Switzerland is it's usually a settled team. So I feel like most of the team that does um, play at the weekend will be uh, familiar to a lot of Welsh fans. There are a few players on the bench, such as Ruben Vargas, who plays for Augsburg in the Bundesliga. He's kind of on the fringes. He's a player more for the future. But with Renato Stefan injured just before the tournament, he'll probably get some more game time now, mostly as a substitute. You've also got Jordan Latomba, the wing-back. He um, plays for Nice in France. Again, he probably won't get that much game time, but he could come off the bench. Apart from that, you've got your, your normal players that, of course, you know about, like Jacques Esquire, Jan Sommer. We've also got Silvan Widmer, who plays for Basel. He's had a good season. Basel haven't had a particularly good season, but he's been one of the better players. And then Harris Seferovic is the one that normally leads the line for Switzerland. He plays for Benfica now, and he's improved his game a lot too. Lovely. It sounds like a very talented team. I'm not going to lie. I'm quite scared for Saturday. But um, when you look at the Wales team, where can Switzerland get the better of Wales? And how can Switzerland really overpower Wales in order to win the three points on Saturday? I'm probably guilty of being ignorant to the Welsh team and that I see it as stopping Gareth Bale and then maybe being able to stop the team. But that's I, I don't know fully about the Welsh team. I know there's several good players in there. Um, but in this group, it's kind of ideal for Switzerland because everyone seems evenly matched. You could argue that Italy is a bit further in front of everyone else. But everyone in this group will be looking at the other to take some points off of. So Switzerland can play in a normal... 3-4-1-2 formation, I think that's how they'll line up and they'll, they'll like to control the ball and they'll invite Wales onto them and uh, try and hit them that way. Um, I don't know much about the Welsh defence, I don't know if that's a, a weak part, but um, hopefully it is because Switzerland uh, struggle attack-wise, so it'll be an interesting game. I think there's points in both teams that uh, could be exploited. So, obviously... You look where when we look at the Switzerland team, what are the main weaknesses 
in the Swiss team that Wales can possibly exploit. Because obviously we've got some fast players going down the wing. We've got quite a neat midfield. And we've also got a big striker in Kiefer Moore. So obviously with a big striker in Kiefer Moore, can he cause that centre-back pairing some def- some problems? And can the wingers get past the full-backs? Or do you think you're quite set up to deal with the problems that we can cause? I think it could cause some problems for Switzerland. I don't think the defence is one of the best aspects of the team. I think at times it can look quite shaky. It's been improved with uh, Fabian Schauer of Newcastle coming back into the team. Um, but, yeah, that sort of thing can cause problems. Rodriguez and Widmer are two players that are not slow, but if you've got fast wingers, then it could cause them an issue. And any big strike in the box is going to be problematic too. Um, so, yeah, I think Wales will cause plenty of problems. It makes it more of an interesting game for me because... Again, there's, there's so many points in each team that could uh, be exploited. But yeah, I definitely think Wales will be causing some problems. That's what we love to hear. No offence, but I love that. That's all the confidence <laughs> I need. No, um, so obviously we've looked at the strengths, the weaknesses and the teams. What is your prediction for Saturday's game? Do you have a score prediction in mind? Yeah, there's one that's stuck out with me for the last week or so. I think it's going to be a very tight game. I think I'll go 1-0 to Switzerland. I don't see it. there being many goals in the game. Yeah, I I hope not. But who do you think the goal scorer will be? If you had to pick any goal scorer in the Swiss team that will get that goal and win you the three points, who do you think it'll be? I'd have to go with uh, Shakiri. He tends to, in these sorts of games, he seems to find that bit of magic. And we've got Seferovic up front, but he can't really be relied upon. So... I would have to go for Shakiri. When in doubt, go for Shakiri. <laughs> a Shakiri 30 yard screamer, as I've seen many <laughs> times. Yes, I'll, I'll take that. Hopefully, we can stop him and get the midfield tight to him as soon as possible because he is dangerous. But last question When you look at the whole Euro 2020 campaign coming up, how far do you think this Swiss team can go? Do you think they'll be knocked out in the group stages? Round 16, quarterfinal, semis, and so on. How do you think you're going to do this this tournament? Well, for the last three or four tournaments now, I've always went into the tournaments just hoping that the team didn't let themselves down. I think it's got so much potential. And on their day, they can match up to anyone. I think they, they, they've shown that in the past. They, they drew with Brazil in 2018. They beat Belgium 5-2 in the Nations League. So they've definitely got the potential. But the last three tournaments, they've reached the last 16, and that's the furthest they've went. So I think now there's an expectation and hope that they can now move on to the quarterfinal. The problem with that is, of course, it's probably the hardest group that they've had in the last uh, three tournaments. So in my head, I've had them as quarterfinals, but I've also had them as bottom of the group after a disappointing tournament. I'm going, to, I'm going to go for quarterfinals. I think this time they really can do it. And I believe that for this group of players, it might be maybe the last chance to do that. It's not a, a, an old team, but there's some youngsters coming through from the under-21s that will probably be used in the future. So, yeah, this is kind of make or break for a lot of these players now. They really need to take that next step forward, and I think they will. Where do you think they'll place in the group? Do you reckon it'll be a first, second or third? Again, I've I've... Went back and forth between top and the group and everything else, but I'll go with uh, second. Ooh, strong prediction. You're going to have to get some good games going on there, but yes. we'll find out. Starts on Saturday. Saturday at two o'clock, Wales versus Switzerland in Baku. I cannot wait for this game. I hope you can even. I, I can imagine you're excited as I am. Oh, yeah. Can't wait. It's going to be a good one. The whole tournament, I think. But yeah, as I say, the group's so tight that Every game's got so much riding on it. So, yeah, it'll be a good one, for sure. And who do you have winning the whole tournament? That's the big question. For some reason, I'm going for Portugal. I know that they've not... France have probably got the strongest team, but uh, there's something I like about Portugal's team. Um, So, yeah, I'm going for Portugal. I would either go with France or Portugal, so I'm completely in agreement with you. But, Craig, thank you very much for joining the Welsh Watch podcast today. I hope you enjoyed... And if you want to check any of Craig's social media, we'll have it on the screen here. So go and give him a follow. But thank you very much for joining us, Craig. No, no problem. Thanks very much for having me on. Thank you very much. Right. The last part of the podcast today is our predictions for the all-important game on Saturday. 
Obviously, Switzerland, they're a brilliant team there. Unbeaten in eight, which includes a 3-3 draw to Germany and a 1-1 draw to Spain, and also includes a 7-0 thrashing there in their last showing against Liechtenstein, I do believe. And when it comes to Wales versus Switzerland, seven times the two teams have played. Wales have got the better of Switzerland on five occasions, whereas Switzerland have got the better of Wales on two. The last time they played was 2011 in Cardiff when Gary Speed was the manager. Um, it was a 2 0 win for Wales. Aaron Ramsey and Gareth Bale got on the score sheet. Personally, I'm not too sure on what the score will be yet. So I'm going to do what most hosts do and I'm going to pass it straight on to you, Ben. What's the score on Saturday? Oh, I really don't. <laughs> I don't know either, <laughs> but I think it's going to be low scoring. I don't think there's going to be a lot of goals in this one. I think, I think we win. I'm going to say 2 1 to us, but. Could be swayed to just like a one nil or something. I do think we win, but I think, I think if we don't, that's without sounding bad. I think all our Euros is on this first game, so I think we have to win. That's why I think we'll take it seriously. I think we'll play our strongest team against Switzerland, whatever that may be, whatever Paige thinks it is. So I'm going to say two one to Wales. Who do you think scores? Straight away, if, if right, if he plays, Keith Moore scores. I put my I put my house on it. If he doesn't, then I'll say. Dan James and someone like Ramsey or something. So I'll say James and I'll say James and Ramsey. I like that. And also the house is on it, so <laughs> taking your house if he doesn't score. Lee, what do you think the prediction is going to be? You see, before I looked back on their previous results, I would have said two no Wales, but seven goals in their last game. I know it was against whatever that team is. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna match on Ben and say two one. Two one. That means I've got to go different. You have to. You are. The I'm host. gonna go. I'm gonna go one nil Wales. And I'll tell you why. Craig, in his interview, he said that Switzerland aren't great going forward. And you look at our defense, we're solid. If you're not great going forward, you're gonna have problems against Roden and Cabango. That's just a fact. But I'm only saying one. Well, go on. What, what are you saying? I also think if we're looking, because obviously tomorrow, Euro kicks off, and we're, it's, well, I suppose today when this comes out, Turkey versus Italy as well. I low key, I want to put a little prediction on that one as well, because that game is really important for us. And I look, right, I've now looked at everything, and I think it's going to be 1 1. 1 1. one If not, 2 2. It was, I bet you this one's a draw. I bet you. You've got your hopes up high on this Turkish team, haven't you? I've watched. So the other day, I was watching the, like their promo video, and they were showing all their goals and the way they pass around. They're a very good passing team for someone that you know you wouldn't expect to be. Lee, what are you saying for Turkey versus Italy? Uh, it's quite concerning that Ben's turning me around to Turkey. <laughs> but, yeah, watch uh, it. No, trust me, Italy are going to win like four 0 now. <laughs> no, we know. Uh, let's 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 go with. 3-1 to Italy. That's probably, I, I, the smart, that's probably the smarter prediction. I'm just being a bit ambitious for Turkey. I feel like you need to get a Turkey shirt after this. If they, if do they win the Euros, I promise. There we are, we video first. If, oh, if they win the Euros, you've got to get some shares in some Turkish team. I'll get a Turkish shirt with Laporte on the back. <laughs> oh, gonna have to. that man's changing nations like it's no one's business. I'm going to say... Just a classic 2-1 Italy. I think that Italy team a bit too strong, but we will see what happens. Saturday is what matters. Walkabout in Cardiff is going to go nuts when we score. The Jaegers are going to be over the shoulders. The dark fruit from Ben is going to be in someone else's face. It's going to be beautiful. Saturday at walkabout is where it's going to be. And then out after when we win our first game in the Euros. Anyway, that is all we've got for today's podcast. It's the big game on Saturday. That's what everyone cares about. I hope you enjoyed. I was Ben Thomas, Ben Evans, Lee Glow. Say your goodbyes, boys. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye-bye.